Hello everyone, welcome back to the very messy workshop as always. I'm working on the bulldozer here. So these are, this is one of the track frames where the tracks, well, where the tracks go. That there is the slot for the drive sprocket. And then that mount there is for a hydraulic motor that'll poke through and drive that drive sprocket. I did a major redesign, major, major redesign. Uh, some of you may know, almost a year ago now at this point, I had, this tube used to be longer and I had slots cut into it in an X formation. The idea was that I was going to have a, a yoke move back and forth to adjust the tracks. Well, that was fine and dandy, but the tube itself has a lot of stress in it. So when I machine those two slots, um, really four slots, it splayed out and it warped and it was a problem. So I just never, I tried to solve that problem without just cutting it off and starting over, but I couldn't do it. What I'm doing now, which solves several problems all at once, I have these sections of C-channel that I've notched out to fit underneath here so it, the track and the rollers, all of it's on the same sort of plane. The rollers might end up a little bit below the sprocket and the idler, but that's fine. But that's notched. I'll weld it to the tube after I clean everything up. And so that solves how long this was and then with the issue with my uh, sprocket tensioning system not sprocket the idler tensioning system has been solved i took the sections i cut out cut them up and they straddle this c channel perfectly you'll notice this c channel has an angle on it by using sections of this c channel i have I have a perfect uh, angle on here and radius and everything to straddle this and guide my sprocket back and forth. So I have four of these. One, two, three, four. I have these springs, which don't seem like they're heavy enough. They might not be, but I can stand on them and they don't move hardly at all. I have two of them for each track. Um, track frame. I think they're going to be heavy enough. And I have these two. I believe they're for adjusting how level a house is, house jacks. But I have two of them for the thread that goes on the outside here. One of the issues that this solves, well, I have the slide. That's going to be strong. All of my rollers are going to be underneath here. That mounts the rollers. I don't have to make another mount for the rollers. Instead of having all of my springs and screws inside of this tube, because they were going to be in here, um, now they're all exposed. They're easier to get to, easier to design. I don't have so many constraints with, you know, I have to fit everything in that tube and I have to be able to get to it easily without uh, damaging the structural integrity of the tube. Uh, and also, this track frame was too short. I didn't like the way it looked on my uh, main, on the main frame of the dozer. It just looked goofy. It was so short. So now this, it just solves a lot of issues. And I think it's going to be the best solution. I got to get that welded up. I have to get this whole frame welded up. First, I got to get it all cleaned up. So. Just wanted to show that off and I have some other things inside the shop. So here at the main bulk of all of the dozer parts, the main frame and motor and all that, there is one of my unmolested track frames that hasn't, I haven't done anything to it. I'm kind of making one of them, one of the track frames into what I want and then I will do this, whatever I do to the other track frame, I'll do to this track frame. That way the other one's kind of my guinea pig and I don't waste so much work modifying both at the same time and changing stuff up. Here are some parts I've collected. There's the other spring. This is a hydraulic joystick for the blade. 
side to side, up and down. This is a instrument instrument panel off of a two and a half ton truck, uh, deuce and a half. Uh, I don't know what exactly it came off of, but it saves me from having to drill a bunch of holes and it looks nice. Has some gauges on it too. I have a fuse panel for it. This came out of the Lodestar, as a matter of fact. This was the fuse panel for it. It will be the fuse panel for this dozer because I do plan on having a couple of lights and it's just nice to have. And I've done a bunch of work on my drive system for all of my gear pumps. It'll be a one-to-one -one drive, so this motor is probably going to end up spinning up quite a ways. I might end up changing that. I'll have to see. Um, the sprockets are a little bit big for the purpose and it is going to have to ride in a an enclosed oil bath. The bell housing will be sealed off. Once I'm done with all of the work I'm doing in here, this whole thing, this half inch plate is going to get welded to that sheet metal. Eh, maybe not sheet metal, it's kind of thick. It'll get welded to that and I have a flywheel cover for the bottom and it'll all be enclosed in oil to help cool down that chain. The flywheel itself is actually going to dip into the oil and the flywheel will be what throws the oil around. So hopefully that system works out all right. If not, I can swap it out for v-belts i just don't want to run v-belts in there um this system is going to be pretty loud but it is a bulldozer so not only that but i have started forging out track links i have to make dies to machine them a while ago i wanted to make some dies to be able to round these out on the punch press because these do need to be rounded to be able to mesh properly. Then I realized, A, I'm lazy and that's going to be a lot of work, and B, another option is my plasma cutter. Make a jig, machine two holes that are going to be in here, and make a jig to just plasma out that outside radius. That's going to be faster. That's probably going to work better as I will be centering off of the center of these holes. And um, that's what I'm going to do for these. Now, the, that's going to be a whole nother can of worms that I'll get into in another video. I have more of them too. And the track rollers themselves. Are three inch wide by three and five eighths inch solid steel. If you don't recognize that, that there, there is a cut up remnants of an overarm off of a Kearney and Trekker number 2H mill. The gray one over there had overarms that were bent whenever I originally bought the machine. Sorry, when I originally bought that machine, the overarms were bent. Not by much, it was only 15 or so thou, but it was enough. And it made it so that pushing them through... So many interruptions. The bend in those overarms made it so that it was very difficult to move them through the main casting of the machine. So I stored them, I put the overarms off of my green 2H mill uh, in there and those ones have been working perfectly. I saved this material because I knew eventually I would have a use for it. Now you might be wondering, is that keyway in there gonna screw me up? You know, that slot. And yes, that slot in there is going to screw me up. I'm not going to turn these down to the diameter um, that is gonna clean up that slot. What I'm gonna do, and what I'm doing, is rough machining them I have to machine the other side on these, but I'm rough machining them. And then whenever I'm done with that, I'll go in here with my welder and weld up these keys. And then once that's done, 
I will finish machine them. I didn't do that before whenever the bar was whole because I have to make one inch wide by half inch steps and that is a lot of material to just remove or weld up and then remove for no good reason. I just rough turned them and I'll fill it all in with weld, finish turn them and I'll be done. Luckily a good chunk of it is solid without that without that key in it but still for these eight it's going to screw me up actually it's 16 because this is only one side so that is how i solved the roller problem i'm not going to use the aluminum i thought about using solid rubber wheels for a little bit i also thought about having just straight slides uh, using the c channel that is on the machine now just directly on the track chain with some kind of a solid guide. I thought about that, but decided it, it was worth it to uh, machine out these rollers and do it properly. Here is an unmolested overarm. If anyone is sad about these being cut up, don't be sad. I was going to scrap them. Now they are living another life as something more useful than a can or a toaster so that there is an update on the dozer I have been stuck on it and kind of paralyzed for a very very long time because I could not figure out the best way to design this slide without um, dumping a bunch of money into it and steel and I'm very glad I got it figured out. Of course, there's been a lot of time in there when I just haven't thought about it. A lot of time. But now I'm going to hammer on it really hard and get it finished out. So with that being said, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And have a good day.